Hello and welcome to this lecture on chemical process modeling and simulation. So far we have gotten some introduction to the kind of problems that chemical engineers face, introduction to modeling as a whole, different types of models, mathematical models, mathematical models of chemical processes and um, some examples of what kind of mathematical representations may show up and a couple of examples in terms of uh, the actual uh, processes that could be modeled. What are the various uh, steps involved in mathematical modeling? What is the recipe? Um, you know, uh, some insights into how to identify essential physics uh, of a process that you are trying to model, the right kind of length scales, time scales, how to verify, uh, calibrate, validate, and so on and so forth. Now, in this uh, particular lecture, what we are going to look at is to define three types of chemical engineering problems uh, out of the list of uh, a large set, a uh, larger list that we saw in the first lecture. These are the design problem, the rating problem and the analysis problem. All three you have done before and you have a certain idea of what these three are, but uh, we will define them in a slightly formal context uh, in the terminology and parlance of uh, chemical process modeling that we've been sort of seeing so far. So a simple chemical process problem may be characterized as you have a unit where there is a process or an operation, meaning with a reaction or without a reaction, right? Um, it takes place. There are a number of uh, input streams entering the unit and there are a number of output streams exiting the unit. And this picture we saw, this is the basic block diagram that captures how modeling of a chemical process or chemical unit takes place. So you have basically some sort of processes or operations that are taking place in a unit. There are inputs, there are outputs, there are unit and process variables, there are constraints. The constraints are the equations or inequalities that relate the um, output input and the unit process variables and those constraints together form the mathematical model. So now we look at the three types of problems. What is a design problem? A design problem is a problem where your output is specified. You are designing either the unit or the process. All right. So you are designing either the unit or the process to achieve a desired output given the input. So this problem is something that you have solved. I'll give you classic examples. Calculate the required heat transfer area in a shell and tube heat exchanger or a double pipe heat exchanger. Calculate the volume of a CSTR needed to achieve a desired conversion. Determine the number of theoretical stages needed to achieve a desired separation in an equilibrium stage operation. Um, this, these are all unit variables, right? Process variables, again, what should be the temperature of operation of a non-isothermal CSTR to get the desired conversion? Right? So there are so many questions like these that you have answered. Um, what should be the desired pressure drop across uh, a plate and frame filter to achieve the desired uh, rate of filtration? So, you know, so th these are all the kind of uh, process variable questions that you've asked. And to solve them, again, you use the constraints or the equations uh, or inequalities in case of um, inequal, uh, you know, when you have opt optimization kind of problems, you, you have inequalities, right? So you use the same equations to solve the, uh, the design problem. It is just a type of problem that you solve with a mathematical model. So this is one type of problem we solve with a mathematical Another type of problem that we solve with a mathematical model is the rating problem. Given an input, given a unit where a given process or operation takes place, what is the output? The simplest one, you know, you take a bulb, you say the rating of the bulb is 10 watt or 20 watt or 40 watt or whatever that, what does that mean? If I plug that bulb into my power uh, supply system in my, into, in my, in my home, Given my voltage, given my frequency, uh, AC, okay, uh, when that bulb works, this will be the power consumed. So that will be the output. All right. Or if you take, for example, 
um, you know, um, uh, uh, plug flow reactor, given the length of the plug flow reactor, cross-sectional area or diameter of the plug flow reactor, and given the in inlet concentration, given the temperature of operation, which basically means you have essentially been given the rate constant. Now tell me when the stream comes out, what would have been the conversion? So this is a typical rating problem. The third problem is all, everything else. <laughs> so here you notice that everything is fair game. Input, output, unit process variables, constraints, everything is in red. All right. So essentially, I am considering all kinds of analysis that I do. Okay. But always I have my question is what is the output? Right. So, you know, what is the range of uh, output I can, uh, you know, this, given this is the range, what can be the range of operation of temperature uh, beyond which I should not allow the temperature for reactor to either decrease or increase or whatever, for example. Or um, what if scenarios, various what if scenarios. Remember in the last lecture we were talking about this parameter sensitivity. That's a classic analysis problem. So, uh, you know, if I change my uh, fluids viscosity to something else, what will be my pressure drop? If I change my thermal conductivity of my, um, uh, you know, uh, tube uh, surface, tube material of the shell and tube heat exchanger, what will be my heat transfer coefficient and thereby what will be the output temperature of the, of the, the stream that I'm trying, trying to heat up. So these are all analysis problems. I could change the input conditions. I could change the unit itself, like how I say I was changing, I'm changing the material and therefore new thermal conductivity comes in. I could change the process operating conditions. And depending on, on some analysis problems, I could be comparing systems. Okay. Now, do I have a CSTR followed by a PFR or do I have a PFR followed by a CSTR? Or do I have just uh, three CSTRs and series or something like that, which would give me the best conversion? So now what happens? The system itself has changed and therefore the model equations also will obviously change. So you, you may look at a change in the, the constraints themselves. So all kinds of problems that, that do not fall under the simple easy category of rating or design falls under an and when you solve these problems, these are all modeling problems. And as I you have mentioned, system of, system of linear algebraic equations, non-linear algebraic equations, system of ordinary differential equations, partial differential equations, differential algebraic equations, integral equations, integral differential equations, all kinds of. You can even have uh, when you want to optimize constraints, right? And solving this uh, simulation involves usually some sort of um, numerical methods. You should not laugh seeing Fortran. Uh, who, who uses Fortran anymore? Well, welcome to some really advanced simulation uh, tools that are available. They still use Fortran. Um, C, MATLAB, Python, R, you know, all kinds, of, all kinds of tools are available. And is solving these model equations. Our simulations and modeling and simulations are integral aspects of chemical engineering design rating and analysis. Um, this is a very short lecture uh, just to introduce these three concepts of design problems, rating problems, and analysis problems. Thank you for listening to this lecture. If you have any questions, as always, please feel to feel free to um, you know leave them uh, in the comment section. I will get get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you, and you please you do have a wonderful wonderful day. Bye.